wanted to bust out my marker, like I could use that on here. Okay, so when we're talking about um, forming ionic bonds, we always have a cation combined with an anion, right? So we have a po positively charged guy and we have a negatively charged guy. So let's look at an example. So let's say we have, oh, can I do a superscript here? <laughs> this is gonna be the worst lecture ever. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is bad. I can do better. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> this is the worst. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> so we have our cation, and let's say we're hooking it up with an anion. That's a Cl minus. All right, what's this guy's name? Chloride. Chloride, right? So we have a sodium ion and a chloride ion, right? And when we hook them up to make an ionic bond, we're always going to form a neutral compound, okay? This is super important always, always, always going to form a neutral compound. So what we're saying when we say we want a neutral compound is when we hook these guys up, we wanna make sure that we have enough of each to make a neutral compound, right? So if I have a positive one charge from sodium, oops, so I have plus one, from my one sodium ion, right? And I add that to, let's say we start off with one chloride ion, right? That would be a negative one charge. And we have one of them, right? What does that give me for my overall charge? Two? Zero. Zero. Zero, right? So we have essentially negative one and positive one will give us a net charge zero. Everybody okay with that? We're okay. So we only need one of each of these guys to make a neutral, aka ionic compound. So when we write the, oops, Chem, oops, chemical, oh my God, chemical formula, which is going to be the symbols, symbols, compound. Right, so the chemical formula is always going to be the symbols for the atoms or ions that are in the compound. If there's more than one, of an atom or ion, we write the number of the um, the number of the ion or atom in a subscript next to the symbol. This is so much harder to do in are you guys. So for the chemical formula for sodium chloride, we would end up having NaC 
CL, right? So our chemical formula here would be sodium chloride, NaCl, would, I'm sorry, I strike that, reverse it. Our chemical name would be sodium chloride. Our chemical formula would be NaCl. Does that make sense? Let's do another example here, okay? Um, let's see. Name is um, okay. So potassium oxide. So we want to know what is the chemical formula for this guy. Would it be K positive? So we would start off with um, trying to figure out what the potassium ion is, right? So that would be K. One plus. It would be K plus, right? And what about ox excuse me, oxide? Two minus. So it would be O two minus. Right? Everybody comfortable with that? We're all right. So, if we want to get a neutral compound, right? Um, let's, I always start off with one of each ion and see if that gives me a neutral compound and then I can adjust it from there, right? So if I start off with one potassium ion and one oxide ion, what's my overall net charge going to be? Negative one. Negative one. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. So if I start off with one of each, then I'll end up with an overall net charge of negative one, which is not neutral. So if I want to make it neutral, how many of each of these guys do I need? Two potassium. Two potassiums for every one oxide, right? Yeah. Is everybody okay with me on that? So I have K for my chemical formula. I write a little two down here indicating that I need two of them and then my O. And again, if we don't have more than one, we don't write in this subscript. It's just implied, right? But if while you're starting out, you're more comfortable putting a one there, that's totally fine, right? Whatever is more comfortable for you guys. Questions? No. All right. Can I give this one more go? Because 